What size of copper conductor, TW, THW, and THHN, for the 50 ampere circuit for the condition of table 3.10.2.6B16? If your answer is either 8 squared millimeter THW, or 8 squared millimeter THHN. Sorry guys, but that is just a myth. Hello, fellow electrical practitioners, electricians, and future engineers. Welcome to Codesultant channel. You heard it right. 8 squared millimeters THW and THHN are incorrect. The correct answers are 14 squared millimeters TW, 14 squared millimeters THW, and 14 squared millimeters THHN. How come? Our topic on this video is about conductor sizing and selection. Wire or cable selection is about choosing the correct size and type of conductors to ensure that the system is working properly and reliably for the safety of everyone and the property. All conductors to be installed in a building must be listed as specified in section 3.10.3.17 marking. It notes that all conductors shall be marked by the manufacturer. The sample conductor shown is a single core conductor. If this conductor is listed, we can find the following information as required by the code. The maximum voltage of the conductor can operate and install. The insulation of the conductor also represents the temperature rating of the conductor. The manufacturer's name, trademark, or other distinctive marking by which the organization responsible for the product can be readily identified. The conductor size or area. In the Philippines, we are using squared millimeters, while in NEC, they use American wire gauge. Cable assemblies This is applicable to multi-core conductors. In the Philippines, thermoplastic insulation is commonly used due to its high strength, lightweight material, and relatively low processing cost. These are TW, THW, and THHN. Where T is for thermoplastic, W is for wet or damp location, H is for heat resistance, and for the double H is for high heat, and N is nylon. If there is no H, such as TW, the temperature rating of insulation is 60 degrees Celsius. If 1H, such as THW, the temperature rating of insulation is 75 degrees Celsius, while HH has an insulation temperature of 90 degrees Celsius, and when an insulation has dash 2, this is also 90 degrees insulation. There are more than 20 ampacity tables in the PEC, 6 of them are for 0 to 2000 volts. All these six tables are in Table 3.10.2.6, B, 16 to 21. Let's discuss what is in the ampacity tables. The top part of the table shows the method of installation or application. It shows that the table is for a voltage rating of 0 to 2000 volts. The insulation temperature rating of the conductors, the number of conductors that are installed in raceways, and how these conductors are installed. This table is for an ambient temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. There are two types of conductors in this table, copper and aluminum. The first column is the sizes of the conductors in squared millimeters. And this column represents the ampacity depending on the type of insulation and material used. How will we know which one of the six tables we need to use for a particular project or application? The table summarizes all six ampacity tables of 0 to 2000 volts. Let's say we have a dwelling units project. Which among the six tables will we use? Supposing we will be using THW conductors. This THW has a temperature rating of 75 degrees Celsius. Hence, we can eliminate the tables that do not have 75 degrees Celsius. Three tables left. How will you install your conductors? Is it via raceways? Free air? Or support on messenger? Since this is a dwelling unit and the installation method will be via raceways, these two tables are not applicable to the project. Therefore, table 3.10.2.6b16 will be used in the project. Let's go back to an earlier question. Why 8 squared millimeters of THW and THHN is not correct? In selecting and sizing the conductors, there are rules and different factors that we need to consider. A safe electrical system starts from the very basic wiring fundamentals, the branch circuit. What are branch circuits? In code definition, a branch circuit, the circuit conductors between the final overcurrent device protecting the circuit and the outlets. It starts at the overcurrent protective device, either a fuse or circuit breaker and extends to the electrical devices connected to the service. 
A branch circuit could either be non-motor such as lighting, receptacle outlets, water heaters, etc., or a motor load circuit. Therefore, branch circuits consist of the following, overcurrent protective device, circuit breakers or fuses, conductors, wires or cables, and loads, motors, lights, small power, etc. This is the last part of the circuit supplying electrical devices. How to determine conductor size for branch circuits. In section 2.10.22, the ampacity of a branch circuit conductor must not be less than the maximum it serves. If a conductor is carrying a continuous load or a combination of non-continuous and continuous load, the minimum branch circuit conductors shall not be less than a load of non-continuous plus 125% of continuous load. For example, a branch circuit with a continuous load of 16 amperes and a non-continuous load of 30 amperes. What will be the total branch circuit current? Given a 30 amperes non-continuous plus 16 amperes continuous, the total is 50 amperes. Therefore, the minimum size of the conductor shall not be less than 50 amperes. Bullet B of the same section states that the minimum branch circuit conductors shall have an allowable ampacity not less than the maximum load to be served after the application of any adjustment and correction factors. Therefore, we need to consider adjustment factors and correction factors. What are adjustment and correction factors? Photos shows two factors that can reduce the conductor's ampacities due to ambient temperature and bundling of conductors with more than three current carrying conductors. Hence, Correction and adjustment factors are the cause of changing the ampacity of the conductor based on the application and condition. Going back to the ampacity table and summary, what if the conductor is not installed based on the application specified in the table? For example, are the conductors to be installed in one conduit more than three current carrying conductors? What if the ambient temperature is more than 30 degrees Celsius? Therefore, the ampacity given in the table will change. It can become higher or lower. How to determine the correction factor? If the ambient temperature is more than or less than the ambient temperature in the given ampacity table. In subsection 3.10.2.6, B, 2, states that, ampacities for ambient temperatures other than those shown in the ampacity tables shall be corrected in accordance with table 3.10.2.6, B, 2, A, or table 3.10.2.6, B, 2, B. The current rating of all conductors decreases when the ambient temperature increases. The higher the temperature, the higher the cable resistance. Hence, the lower the cable ampacity. The conductor allowable ampacities based on the ampacity table must be adjusted when an ambient temperature greater or lower than 30 degrees Celsius. For example, 14 squared millimeters TW has an ampacity of 55 amperes at 30 degrees Celsius ambient temperature. As per table 3.10.2.6, B, 16, however, the conductor will be installed at the surrounding with an ambient temperature of 42 degrees Celsius. What will be the new ampacity of 14 squared millimeters TW? The correction factor for 42 degrees Celsius as per table 3.10.2.6, B, 2, A, is 71%. Hence, 55 amperes multiplied by 71%. Therefore, the new ampacity will be 39.05 amperes. What if this 14 squared millimeters TW is to be installed in one conduit and consists of six current carrying conductors? In bullet 3 of section 3.10.2.6, B, 2, adjustment factors more than three current carrying conductors. Where the number of current carrying conductors in a raceway or cable exceeds three, or where single conductors or multi-conductor cables are installed without maintaining spacing for a continuous length longer than 600 mm and are not installed in raceways, the allowable ampacity of each conductor shall be reduced as shown in Table 3.10.2.6b3a. Cable grouping affects the correction factor due to the thermal effect of each conductors on the others because conductors installed beside each other. For example, a six number of 14 squared millimeters TW has been installed in one conduit. What will be the new ampacity of 14 squared millimeters TW? The adjustment factor for four to six conductors is 80% as per adjustment factor table. Hence, 55 amperes multiplied by 80%. Therefore, the new ampacity will be 44 amperes. Let's have another example. 
Eight numbers of 22 square millimeters TW are installed in one conduit with an ambient temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. What will be the new ampacity of 22 squared millimeters TW? As per ampacity table 3.10.2.6B16, the ampacity of 22 squared millimeters TW is 70 amperes, referring to the correction factor table for ambient temperature is 82% for 40 degrees Celsius, and the adjustment factor for grouping is 70% for 7 to 9 conductor. Therefore, the new ampacity of 22 square millimeters shall be 40.18 amperes. Going back to the first question, why are 8 squared millimeters THW and THHN still considered incorrect, even if no correction or adjustment factor is needed? Are there any factors still to consider? Yes, this is equipment terminal rating. But first, let's define equipment definition in electrical code. Equipment a general term including material, fittings, devices, appliances, luminaires, fixtures, apparatus, and the like, used as a part of or in connection with an electrical installation. Therefore, this definition clarifies that electrical accessories such as lugs, boxes, conduits, bushing, light fittings, receptacle outlets, and the like are considered equipment. Section 1.10.1.15c states that the ampacity of the conductor will be based on the temperature rating of the lowest rated connected termination, conductor, or device within the equipment served. In the figure shown, a conductor is terminated to a circuit breaker and a receptacle outlet. The terminals of the circuit breaker have a temperature rating the same as the other end of the conductor. Let's say this circuit breaker terminal has a temperature rating of 75 degrees Celsius, and the receptacle outlet is 60 degrees. Based on paragraph C, the termination point with the lowest temperature rating is the determining factor for selecting the conductor's ampacity. Hence, whether we use THW or THHN, the conductor's ampacity will be based on 60 degrees Celsius. What if there is no marking in the equipment terminal? This section states that when equipment is not listed and marked, the determination of equipment provision shall be based in subsection 1.10.1.14C1A or C1B. Section 1.10.1.14C1A states that Equipment with termination provisions for circuits rated 100 amperes or less, or marked for 2 squared millimeters through 38 squared millimeters conductors shall be used only for the following. Conductors rated for 60 degrees Celsius. This section is for sizing conductors, 100 amperes or less, or marked for 2 squared millimeters through 38 squared millimeters conductors. In the figure shown, both circuit breakers and equipment are not marked. Hence, Conductors rated at 60 degrees Celsius shall be used. If conductors with a higher temperature rating are to be used, as shown in the figure below, the ampacity of conductors shall be based on the 60 degrees Celsius column, as stated in bullet number 2. Conductors with higher temperature ratings, such as THW and THHN, can be based on a higher temperature rating in the ampacity table if the equipment is marked with the same temperature rating as stated in number 3. When a motor is marked with design letters B, C, or D, the equipment terminal rating is considered to be 75 degrees Celsius, and if the circuit breaker is marked at 75 degrees Celsius as shown in the figure. Hence, conductors can be based at 75 degrees Celsius of the ampacity table. In complying with the equipment terminal rating, what size of copper conductor, TW, THW, and THHN, for a 50 ampere circuit? A. 5.5 square millimeters, B, 8 square millimeters, and C, 14 square millimeters. Unless listed and marked otherwise, conductors must be sized using the 60 degrees Celsius of table 3.10.2.6. Therefore, 14 square millimeters is the answer, whether it is TW, THW, or THHN. To continue with the terminal rating, what if the equipment is over 100 amperes? Section 1.10.1.15C1B states that equipment with termination provisions for circuits rated over 100 amperes are marked for conductors larger than 38 square millimeters. Conductors shall be used only for the following. 1. Conductors rated for 75 degrees Celsius. This section is for sizing conductors over 100 amperes or marked for conductors larger than 38 square millimeters conductors. In the figure shown, 
both circuit breakers and equipment are over 100 amperes. Hence, conductors rated at 75 degrees Celsius shall be used, such as THW. If conductors with a higher temperature rating are to be used, as shown in the figure below, the ampacity of conductors shall be based on the 75 degrees Celsius column, as stated in bullet number 2. What size of copper conductor, THW and THHN, for a 150 ampere circuit? A. 50 square millimeters? B. 60 square millimeters? And C. 38 square millimeters? Unless listed and marked otherwise, Conductors must be sized using the 75 degrees Celsius of table 3.10.2.6. Therefore, 60 square millimeters is the answer, whether it is THW or THHN. Now we understand why the 8 square millimeter is incorrect for the 50 ampere circuits by considering temperature limitation as stated in section 1.10.1.15c. At this time, is the sizing and selection of the conductor complete? Not quite, still, some factors to consider. This is voltage drop of the conductor. Is there any rule in the code for a voltage drop of the conductor? As stated in FPN 4 of section 2.10.2.2, it is recommended that the total voltage drop from the feeder is a maximum of 3%, same with the branch circuits. The total voltage drop will not exceed to 5% from feeders up to the farthest outlet of the branch circuits. Though this voltage drop for the branch circuit and feeder is not mandatory in electrical code, this helps improve the performance and efficiency of electrical equipment. For other equipment, such as sensitive equipment and fire pump, there are rules for voltage drop. For sensitive electronic equipment, the total voltage drop shall not exceed 2.5% from the feeder up to the farthest outlet of the branch circuits. While for the fire pump, the voltage drop at starting condition shall not drop 15% below normal, and at the running condition, the voltage drop shall not drop 5% below the voltage rating of the motor when the motor is operating at 115% of the full load current rating. This voltage drop formula was taken from Appendix D, Wiring Design Examples, D15, Voltage Drop Calculation, where I is the line current in amperes. D is the distance of the device from the source, in meters. K is constant, 2 for single phase, and 1.732 for 3 phase. R is the line AC resistance, in ohms. X is the line reactance at 60 Hz, in ohms. Hence, these are the voltage drop formula for single phase, and 3 phase. Let's have an example. What is a voltage drop of 65 amperes? 3 phase at 400 volts, and 0.85 power factor with a conductor of 22 square millimeters installed in non-metallic raceways at the length of 70 meters? Since the current is given at 65 amperes, the voltage is 3 phase at 400 volts, the power factor at 85%, distance from the source is 70 meters. The first step, let's find the value of R and X. In table 10.1.1.9, we can find the value of resistance and reactance. Since the conductor was installed in non-metallic raceways, we will take the value of reactance X at the PVC column, which is 0.048 ohms per 305 meters. For the resistance R, the value is 0.31 ohms per 305 meters. Substituting the value of X and R to the formula, the voltage drop is 8.105 volts. To determine the percent voltage drop, use the previous formula. Our percent voltage drop is 2.026%. Since this is below 5%, hence, the 22 square millimeter conductor is sufficient. At this time, sizing of conductors complete? Almost there. What if a short circuit occurs in your system? What will be the effect on your conductors? Since short circuit calculations are not part of the topic, I will show the effects of a short circuit if the overcurrent protective device does not trip the circuit immediately. During a short circuit, large amounts of currents flow through the conductor. The heat generated inside the cable during a fault depends on the conductor size and material, as well as the fault current and its duration. The conductor has temperature limits, and these temperature limits depend on the conductor insulation material type. To avoid this, Conductor short circuit withstands study shall be included in sizing and selection of conductor. How do we size a conductor short circuit withstands? 
The first step is to identify or calculate the system short circuit. In the circuit shown, the calculated short circuit is 10,000 amperes. The conductor is protected by overcurrent protective device with clearing time of one cycle. The next step is to verify the short circuit current rating of conductors. To check that, we can refer to the table as shown from Insulated Cable Engineers Association chart. The table shows the short circuit with stand of copper cable with 75 degrees Celsius thermoplastic insulation. For 14 square millimeters THW which approximately equal to 6 AWG, the short circuit with stand for one cycle is 10,800 amperes. Since the calculated short circuit in the tapping point is only 10,000 amperes for one cycle. Hence, the 14 square millimeters THW conductor can withstand the available short circuit. What if the size of the conductor is not given in this table? For example, 50 square millimeters and higher. This table was extrapolated from the formula as shown in the Insulated Cable Engineers Association protection chart. By using this formula, we can calculate the short circuit current rating of conductors that are not shown in the chart. We now understand all the factors that need to consider in choosing the correct size of conductors. These are Compliance with the minimum sizing of branch circuits and feeders. There are two things to consider that reduce the conductor's ampacities, the correction and adjustment factors. The conductor temperature rating shall be determined by the connected equipment terminal with the lowest temperature rating. Although voltage drop is not a code rule for branch circuits and feeders, it should be within the accepted limits to help improve the performance and efficiency of electrical equipment. The conductor should be capable of withstanding the short circuit current without thermal damage until the overcurrent protective device trip or clears the fault. Hence, selecting the correct size of conductors involves referencing more than one section and chapter in the Philippine Electrical Code.